Good afternoon to all. I am Rupali Gupta, Assistant Professor, Department of Information Technology, IMT College of Engineering, Greater Noida. At IMT, we are committed to provide a value-driven culture along with creating a professional environment. IMT as a group, large, diversified, imparts knowledge in the field of engineering, management, education, law, pharmacy, etc. I take this opportunity to welcome you all in today's webinar on deep learning. A very warm welcome of today's speaker, Atma Kumar Rai, sir, Director of Engineering, Dr. Gaurav Sinha, sir, HOD IT, Dr. Mahin Sharma, sir, and all the spectators. It is indeed my great pleasure to welcome the speaker, Atma Kumar Rai, sir. He's graduated from JP Institute of Information Technology, Noida. He is skilled in data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. His interest area is how can we use deep learning in medical sciences. His total experience is more than four years in which he worked as a machine learning engineer with various organizations like TopMinds.ai, Madrid, and Ericsson Indian Global Services. He provided project-based industrial training in different prestigious colleges like IITs, NITs, NDTC, etc. Now, I would like to invite and welcome our eminent speaker, Atma Kumar Rai, sir, to address students as well as faculty members. Sir, please. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the session. So, let's start. Uh, just to give me one minute. Let me uh, like yes, uh, share my screen and thank you for your introduction. <laughs> So let me share the screen first. Sir, are you here? I think there is network issue. Yes, I think. Sir, are you here? Yeah, actually, uh, let me see this. So, is it visible or not? Uh, let me know. But this visible? Uh, Hello, uh, is it yes. visible? Hello, uh, sir, your screen is not visible. Yeah, like I'm audible. Yes, sir, you are audible. Yes, you are audible. Hello. Yes, sir, you are audible. Sir, now your screen is visible. Hello. Uh, yes, sir, you are audible. I'm audible. Yes, sir. Sir, you're audible. Uh, is it visible now? Yes, sir. Screen is visible. My screen is visible. Yes, sir. Screen is visible.
Yeah. Am I audible now? Yes, sir. You are audible, and your screen is also visible. Okay. So let's go for. Uh, let's talk about neuron. So here you can see in this image, like suppose we have uh, maybe like let's let's talk about any example. Suppose you are working on a maybe on uh, like uh, images, maybe images from medical or maybe from anywhere, and we want to make a model. That model is going to uh, take some information uh, from the image. Like suppose, uh, let's talk about a driverless car running on the road. Okay, suppose that car is running on the road, and maybe there is an object uh, just front of the uh, like the uh, the car, and the car has to identify the object because you know there is no driver in the car, so car has to identify itself uh, uh, that particular object. So maybe that object is car, or dog, or maybe cat, or maybe anything else. So how can we identify that image uh, directly from using the neural network? Okay. So lots of example there uh, for neural network. So here you can see I'm just uh, giving, taking one image from neural network. Here you can see there are four neurons in the layer one and two neurons in the layer two. So basically, in the neural network, what happened? We just provide the input, and our input is going to the whole neural network and start learning at all. So slowly, slowly, you are able to know how learning and all the happen. So this is basically a neural uh, neural network network architecture. Okay. So basic thing is, uh, let's talk about this first. So this is called single neuron. Okay, this is basically one is all single neuron. So here you can so single neuron is just you can see this image. This is called logistic uh, uh, regression. Even you know in machine learning uh, model uh, there is a, a, a classification model called logistic regression. So same logistic regression you can say uh, say as a single neuron. Okay, so here you can see this is a non-linearity basically. This is the graph. Okay. So, but why we need neural network? Why we can't handle our problem with single neuron? Why we need this this type of neural network? This is the question. So, because actually the problem with single neuron, we can only uh, classify uh, that type of data which is uh, like possible to classify. Like that data has to be linearly, you know, separable. If that data is linearly separable, we can uh, classify that data using single neuron. If that data is not, you know, linearly linearly separable, we are not able to uh, classify that data using single neuron. And that type we have to go for, uh, you know, the neural network. Okay. So let me show you one example. So this will go to you guys. So let me share one example. Just see this. Uh, let me. Just see this. Suppose uh, this is the data. Here you can see we have this data, and you can see I can easily separate this uh, because you can see there is if you if you want to separate this data and this data, we have to just make one single line. Suppose these the people who are impacted by the cancer, and these people who are not impacted by the cancer. Suppose you are working on medical data, and we want to classify this data. So there is no need to go for neural network because just see this. This is a linearly separable data. We can separate this data uh, using a single line. Let me run this. So if you are able to see this, and let me run this function. So just see this. If I just I run only reporting time, and you are able to see, I am able to classify this data. But suppose my data looks like this. Then this is not a linear separable data. I am not able to separate this data using a single line. Suppose I see this. If I run it, I am not able to separate this because this is a complex uh, data. It's not uh, as uh, simple as previous one. So let me add some neurons, okay, and then see whether you are able to classify this or not. So let me add some neurons here. You can say I am adding some neurons like. Four neurons, and let me add another also layer. So you can see this is the one layer where I'm giving four neurons. Here another layer. Okay, only two neurons. And now let me run this. And we are able to see, to, uh, able to see now we are able to classify this data also using this neural network. Using these neurons, you are able to classify this data. Okay, so if Like when in industry or maybe in academics also, when you are working on a project, and that maybe that data is not uh, is not linearly separable, then you are not able to classify that data using single neurons. We need a neural network. We need uh, more than maybe more than ten, more than twenty neurons in one single layer. It depends actually. It's totally hyperparameter tuning. Whenever we have data and trying to build the model, that time we are going to see how we can choose number of neurons and how can we identify how much. Uh, layers we need that totally problem uh, like 
oriented we can't say a exact number it depends on data and uh, uh, problem okay but anyway uh, the most important fundamental line is whether your data is linearly separable or not so here you can see this data is not linearly separable so you are not going to uh, build model only using single neuron we have to go for multiple neuron that is called neural network okay so this is very simple terms let's go back to our slide so this that's, that's why we need multiple neural network okay so you know uh, in the process of that learning here you can see actually uh, see this this is basically you know when we try to run our all the neurons how uh, like actually the neurons try to learn the data okay so in the learning process we have different different techniques like if you go and you know explore this like gradient descent momentum based gradient nastro gradient eda grad rms pro adam these are the different different learning technique you can use anyone like nowadays people try to use adam and rms pro you can use anyone that depend totally actually okay so these are the learning technique i'm not going to deep into this otherwise uh, actually these are the then it will become not of such type of session it will become classroom class okay so because these are really math oriented laws so i'm not going to inside but i'm saying these are the learning techniques and you can learn it whether like even the research papers also available you, if you uh, want to try you can try that okay and these are the activation function here you can see like here we are using this activation function like logistic we have different different you know activation function like logistic tanach relu leaky relu all these uh, things are able so whenever you try to build a model suppose you using either tensorflow keras or pytorch already this uh, all like return you have to just identify which uh, like you know uh, non linear you are trying to use so there are some you know uh, theory behind why such like when by which type of uh, non linearity you are going to use so anyway these are non linearity available in this but anyway let's go ahead so let's talk about this deep learning so actually in deep learning we have different different uh, neural network first is called convolutional neural network another is called multiple this is basically your uh, multiple neural network and third is called rnn recurrent neural network okay so actually you know cnn and rnn both are very important nowadays in industry you find lots of you know uh, work is like happening even on cnn rnn both so cnn basically is called convolutional neural network actually is, uh, belongs to image problem and videos problem and rnn basically belongs to recurrent uh, like uh, times rigid type of problem even like uh, your nlp and all uh, like based on the rnn model so let's go and deep and see how this works so let's first talk about cnn conventional neural network actually uh, you know uh, if you see this is our fully connected neural network okay this is our fully connected neural network this is suppose this is the input and then we passing out input features to the neurons here you can see these neurons are there like uh, in layer four neurons and all neurons okay so this is called fully connected neural network cnn is basically we are going to share the neurons you know there are some techniques how can do this we have to do cat convolutions and max pooling and all so many anyway, we are not going to detail in that but anyway we can uh, build the model be even before like if you don't know you can directly nowadays we have boxes like google net rest net and all so if you if you want we can try otherwise you can create our own using the scratch like we go to convolution and max pooling and all okay so here you can see this is the neural network okay so basically in cnn here you can see this neuron is connected to this uh, feature and this feature also even if you see this neuron this neuron is connected to all the four neurons prior to that layer okay and but in cnn is not like that we are just going to share the neurons okay so let's go ahead let's see this so here you can see suppose this is an image okay so this image is directly we are passing through the cnn network so this is basically cnn network and after then again we have to go for neural network fully connected neural network okay so you know uh, there is a question uh, why we uh, why we don't passing this in the directly to fully connected neural network why before fully connected neural network we passing our image to uh, convolutional neural network so there is a reason behind this actually we talk about the image when you read the image actually in the pixels and you find the features maybe sometimes uh, it depends on image size maybe suppose your image is 250 cross 250 cross 3 3 is for channel red green blue and then you multiply and you find the feature the feature is like very high okay so if you uh, try to build that directly through the fully connected neural network maybe you need more number of layers and more number of uh, neurons okay and if you try to learn that number of neurons very difficult okay maybe you are working on any cloud or anywhere we need you know lots like 
very uh, good hardware. So that's why we, we can uh, first try to scratch the information from the emails using CNN, and then we pass the that information through fully connected neural network. We try to build the uh, like the uh, whole uh, like image model. Okay. So in image model, first we have to pass our image through uh, conventional neural network and. That we are passing through fully connected neural network. So you, you can see it's so, uh, like a um, conventional neural network actually. Okay, so you know uh, if you're talking about this uh, conventional neural network, in this conventional neural network, we try to do convolution, max, lots of you know theory behind this, lot, lots of math behind this. And if you don't want to go for that directly, we you can use a boxes like the you know VGG16, Google Net, ResNet. These are the boxes directly you can apply. Okay. So uh, the application of conventional, I'm like I'm passing this because you know if you go inside this, it will take lots of time, even more than uh, we need 20 hours to talk about this. So I'm not going to inside this. Let's go to application of that uh, conventional neural network basically. So OCR like optical character recognition, like suppose read some texture from images, like you know suppose you upload some uh, some image like maybe written into the, the image if you want to uh, read the text you can use ocr this called optical character recognition that using also like this is the all application of uh, computer vision the neural network image classification image classification means like i already told you suppose your your maybe driverless car is running on the road and there is an object behind the car the car has to identify the object maybe it's car maybe it's dog maybe it's elephant anything that ca car has to identify okay Update detection. This is actually sometimes maybe in one frame we have a different different images and we have to identify. I'm just going, uh, coming to that also. Face detection is very simple. You know uh, why simple? Actually, you no know, face is almost same. Like every human body has the same pattern. Now we have two eyes, one nose, one mouth. So the pattern is almost same. So face detection problem is very simple. Let's see this. So uh, if you see this, this is basically your uh, object recognition problem where in one image we have maybe different different object and we have to identify that object. So if you want to see the models, we have different different model. I will come to that. First see this. This is basically in like your face recognition. Maybe here you can see in one image we have two like person and we are trying to find the faces of that. Okay. And this is actually called image capturing. Sometimes maybe here you can see there is a dog sit, like sit here, and we have to uh, give the caption to that image. This is another problem of computer vision. In fact, in this problem we have to like involve NLP also because here text also involves uh, because we have to give the text for that image. So uh, if we can't make this model only using CNN. We need RNN also. Okay. So let's talk about one by one. Let's talk about the face recognition. It's a very simple task. Let me uh, show you example if you want to build this. It's very simple. See this? This is uh, like image uh, 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 like on my desktop. I'm just uploaded to Google Collab. It's uh, uh, called, uh, like a Jupyter notebook actually. It's simple. Okay, provided by Google. So here you can see I make the model and let's, don't, don't go into the model. Directly see the result. If you are able to see, I'm able to. And find the face using this model. Very simple. Actually, right now there is no need to learn this type of model. Why? Already models are available. You can directly use that model because face pattern is almost same. Suppose we have to identify maybe this is some name, like suppose she is Rita, and you have to say she is Rita, then definitely we have to go for object classification problem. Then it's not an image like face recognition, but face recognition is very simple. Okay. So here you can see I just uh, use the trained model. Even I'm not uh, training this on chat. You can see here if you see, I'm just installing MPCNA. This is a uh, this is a model for image uh, face recognition. I'm directly installing it, and uh, here you can see this is my image and reading this image. And when you read the image, it's basically in pixels. And see this. I'm just passing this pixel to this empty scene. Okay, this is empty scene and detect faces. And here you can see I got the face, like first face and second face. And then after I'm doing Python and all, and uh, try to make the boundary because this this model will provide you all this uh, coordinate. So you have a coordinate, then you can just plot this. So I just plot the rectangular plot. Here you can see even you go for, uh, find eyes and on everything. Even maybe you in your image we have more than two, more than three, anything we are able to find the thing. This is so powerful. Okay. So uh, the like the, the intention to show this actually uh, and like face recognition problem problem is very simple. Anyone can build this problem. Okay. 
if we're talking about classification where and where we want to classify like this is the cat this is the dog this type of problem is really good so let's uh, let, let me try to show you here you can see uh, this is a very famous data it's already available you can see this data so this is called cifr 10 data so in this data set we have total 10 class like maybe here you can see automobile bird cat and all so i just downloading this data and see here you can say 50000 data and 10 children so i am taking 50000 from training my model at least the 10000 for test my model so if you see i build this model here you can see this is the like car and all and I am able to build this model. This is the, basically the model. So I'm not going to detail into the model. Why? Because maybe you don't know how model work. But, but here you can see, I want to show this one, this result only. So you can see this, this is actually loss. And here you can see this is the result. So let me show you the result only. And this is the result you can see uh, this is our test and this is a train so you can see my accuracy for uh, training and test both are almost same so this model is working per perfectly so why i'm showing this actually if you want to build such type of model like uh, a classification model where you have to classify the images whether it's a cord or dog or anything so that time you have to uh, like focus on whether your model is overfit or not overfit means sometimes your model is giving good accuracy for training and it's not giving for testing training testing means whenever you have data first uh, you know uh, separate your data in train and test why because uh, we want to train our model to train data and then we want to test our model on such data which is like not seen by the model it's totally unseen for the model that's why you break the data there are some uh, fundamental reason for that okay uh, there are some reasons but i'm not going into this otherwise we have to do for math and all okay so uh, this is basically classification uh, problem okay so in classification uh, model if we can build easily it's not a big deal uh, if you want to build this we can use any model like here we have here you can see this this is not net this is a this is a, actually you can think like a box okay and you are passing your data through the box this box will uh, give you the total information like scratch the information and then you pass your information to the fully connected neural network if you like you can use these boxes uh, if you don't want to make your CNN model from scratch okay we can build like if you see this one this my model i build this model through scratch i'm not using any boxes here you can see see the model if you see i'm using convolution convolution max pulling convolution then i using here fully connected neural network here you can see 128 neurons and 10 neurons so but there is no need to do this even you directly there's no need to make this model directly uh, use the your CNN box and pass your data through CNN box and then pass your information through the full connection. It depends, okay. Sometimes you use, sometimes you go for scratch. So uh, these are the uh, boxes, very famous boxes I've been insisting Google Net, this net. Here you can see the VC uh, 16, you know, here you can see so uh, uh, like created by uh, Visual Geometrical Group at Oxford. So actually uh, like free API, license is free. You can use this business system. Even you go, go part in such a net, or you can say Google Net, it's by Google. So here, here you can see it's read about it, who is created. And then third one is REST Net. So I, either you can go for anyone. These are the very deep network, Google Net and REST Net, okay. So these are the uh, boxes and I, if you don't want to go for box, you can create your own, okay. So let's talk about uh, this image of like, sometimes maybe you have to identify your object. Maybe in one image, we have different, different object that is called object detection. That's a very good problem, you know, it's a really, really good problem. So, you know, for that, we have two uh, basic fundamental family. One is called Arsene model family and another one is called YOLO family. So either we could go for RCN and YOLO. Actually, RCN is a little more complex than YOLO. Okay, YOLO is less complex. Still, YOLO is complex. And uh, talking, if you compare with YOLO and RCN, YOLO is less compl uh, complex with, uh, if you compare with RCN. Okay. So uh, let's, let's see one example. Let me show you an example of that. If you are able to see this, I build this model, let's see this. 
uh, here you can see this is an image okay and i want to find uh, you know uh, like object i am to identify object even uh, you, if you are active on youtube and anywhere you think lots of people making such a model and they try to find even in graphic and all and their model is identified whether this car the car model and everything okay so even this is this, this this is very very important even nowadays i i think two three days back i saw one research paper uh, they are uh, that research paper is about how you know uh, they are able to find the uh, you know some disease uh, through the image okay so medical image so you can uh, lots of uh, research paper that i found is uh, like two three years back that's a very good research paper so if you try to explore you can explore these models okay so let me show you this I just build the model and see this. Here I'm able to uh, find the. Here you can see it's giving uh, the like the accuracy. Like here you can see it's giving 99.14. Uh, like this accuracy. This is the car. This is the person. This is the accuracy for that. Even you can see you are like it's giving 100 percent. Even you know sometimes they are giving more than human accuracy. Okay. Uh, because it's very difficult to you know to learn images for a human. Okay. Maybe it's easy for us with like we like watching regularly, but if you see one thing and then after maybe one year, like maybe after two years, it's very difficult for us to recognize. But for machine, it's very easy. So that's what I'm saying. It's uh, even it's more than human accuracy. Okay, even any model like Bayesian, Google Net, Net, all of them are um, better than human. Okay. So these are the uh, CNN uh, models, computer vision model, and if you want to build, you can build any type of model. Okay. So uh, let me share my notebook and I try to give something to stand it. So this actually, you know, whenever if you are talking about images, okay, your image like any size doesn't matter. We will pass this image through a CNN model. Okay, when you pass your CNN model, uh, the, your image, any consumer, even maybe from scratch or maybe from boxes, that data comes into the matrix format. Okay, maybe like hundred cross hundred. So first we have to do, we have to flat this data. Okay, because in fully connected neural in neural network, we can't, we can't pass this uh, data in 2D format. We have maybe in 2D format, but actually that data has to be tabular format. Like suppose this is cat, so we have to make this cat like flat. So this is total thousand hundred multiply hundred, so it become almost thousand. And suppose this is three three for maybe channel red, green, blue. Okay, and this is the total like hundred. Multiply hundred, multiply three. So if you see, it's become three zero 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 zero. So this number of feature in one image in cat only. So this is three thousand feature. Three thousand feature. Okay. Maybe if you using the noise model, maybe it will decrease. Suppose when we read this data, maybe the sizes, maybe something like one fifty plus one fifty plus three. And we are not increasing number of kernel or anything. Just passing this. It's a very simple network. And then we have to pass this through a fully connected neural network. Okay. Then we are going to pass this through fully connected neural network. And then we are going to make the prediction whether it's a cat or not. So this one like that. Actually, when we start doing this, maybe it's not saying it's a cat. Maybe it's saying it's a dog. Okay. We are giving here cat and it's saying dog the first time. Then we have to start learning. So how learning start? We have to start back propagation. Okay, it's called back propagation. So that is actually important. If you start uh, uh, learning neural network or anything, maybe in machine learning, the most important thing is your learning. How the learning happen? How your gradient work? That's very very important thing. So that's why I'm uh, coming to this, you know, like my notebook, and want to, like I want to share you how the learning happened. Suppose we want to build a very simple network. Maybe you you have, you know, this is the data, this is the data, okay, and maybe in this data set, suppose this is data, the series. Maybe in this data we have 
three three feature and this is our target feature means you know uh, the independent data and target is the dependent data which depends on feature and we want to build the neural network for this so this one basically x1 x2 x3 this is our feature and we are going to make a neural network suppose i am making neural network layer first and giving four neurons here so this neurons is connected to all the feature okay this neuron is connected to all the feature like this okay and then suppose i am taking two neurons here and after that i am building this is my final layer and i am predicting here so when you pass your data okay like pass your data from here and it's reaching to here maybe it's not giving result then we try to learn and that learning how can do we do we do back propagation from here to here well we have to do back propagation and try to learn so how this happen actually if you just see only one neuron suppose you can see this one suppose i am taking this y1 so how we build this actually it's only math so you see this this is a linear algebra w0 we are giving any weights then w1 multiply with your x1 this is x1 feature then w2 multiply with x2 feature and then w3 multiply with x3 feature so this w0 w1 w3 called weights we are giving any random weight because in the first time we don't know uh, what is exactly weight okay so we just give any random weight and then we say this is y1 so this is y1 then we giving a non linearity and making this yp is called activation actually in terms of neural network so we have to activate this so yp is equal to maybe sigma of y1 so we will activate this again we have to do for this one this one and this one and we have to build this equation again we have to do same thing for this and this time this yp1 you can say this yp1 going to be a input for this so we have to make this equation for this one again go for that and then how do back propagation do we have to do differentiation why if you think actually just think that actually what happen generally loss is like this if you see the square loss the square is like yp minus y square summation and this is your y square loss and this is g so this is your loss loss means what you are predicting this is what is your predicting what is real gap between this no uh, like you want to predict 3 and you are getting 4 so the loss is 1 so you can say the loss is 1 but if you go for all the uh, like the prediction suppose you predict 100 data and if you say the 100 real data uh, get the set like subtraction of all square this and add them why were squaring there is some reason actually suppose sometime your subtraction may be negative for positive and if you add maybe it will cancel that's why we have to do square so if you say this is my loss function if you plot you can see this is looks like this why because it's a square so definitely it's parabola so you know uh, here you can see this is our loss and we are giving some weights so do not w1 w2 w3 maybe if because we are giving some random weights maybe due to these weights maybe you are here maybe we are here in this loss maybe you are here maybe you are here we don't know but we know that there is minima there is one minima and we have to reach to this minima you know this is the concept this is the fundamental concept either you are working on computer vision problem any problem you can think like this this is our last loss and maybe we are anywhere because we are just giving the random weight so due to this random weights we are anywhere on the loss function and we have to reach to the local minimum you can say global minima so how can we reach to there this is basically learning technique either we can go for gradient descent you go for any one okay like eight am i already told you so but let's talk about the gradient that's a very fundamental so gradient work like this w no is equal to w minus alpha dc by dw so you can see this is dc by dw this is loss so it means we going to do the differentiation with respect to loss it means calculus we want okay we are going to do differentiation with uh, 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 like loss with respect to weight so here i am giving dz by dw this is learning rate we will decide the learning rate learning rate you know we have to i'm not discussing the learning rate but just think like it's so, a so any number okay but it's not like that it's a very important term so learning rate we will give some any positive value so this is guaranteed take it like as guaranteed it's positive okay and so there is a small and positive so just think that this is w w minus alpha and dz by dw so what we will do we will do this in loop we will do this in loop we will again again do the last differentiation 
and every time you are updating the weights. Here you can see just W is equal to W minus alpha dz by dw. It means you are updating. So suppose maybe we are here. Maybe we are, we are here. So slowly, slowly we will reach to this local minima. Maybe we are here and slowly, slowly we reach to the local minima. Get your point? So anywhere in the loss, we are able to reach the local min, global minima. When we reach the global minimum, we will find the weights for maybe W0, W1, W2, whatever that. We will find on that global minima and we are looking for that weights. When we will get that weights, our work is done. Now we have to just only do prediction. We are looking for those weights. Okay. So if you are interested how this working, very, very simple. Just see this. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you learn this, you can go for any model. This is a fundamental. All of them are just, you know, you can see a wrapper of that. So this is very much fundamental. So see this, how it's working. Let me make you clear. So see this. Suppose this is my loss. Okay. This is my loss. Maybe I'm here because I'm taking any random weights. And due to that, that weight, maybe this is my loss. This is my loss. So I am on this loss. I want to decrease the loss. I'm doing that. You can see this. This is DJ by DW. This thing. DJ by DW means what? Slope. So if I want to try to find the slope over here, this is the slope. This is the theta. So you can see theta is less than 90. So 10 theta is definitely positive. So my slope is positive. This is positive. I already told you alpha is positive. I told you it's take it guaranteed. So positive, positive is positive term. So then you uh, like you subtract anything from W, definitely it will decrease. So due to this, we are able to reach like this. And we will do this in looping. Uh, then maybe you some of you are thinking, okay, it's working from here. Suppose I'm here, then what happened? Still, this is working. Suppose you are here, just see this. You now your slope, your theta become more than 90. So your tan theta become negative. So your slope become negative. Negative means this is positive. So this is some like become like this. Now we start increasing the weights and we are able to do it. So whether you are here and you are able to do this, I'm giving in a very fast and very you know, very in a very you know very simple way. Otherwise, very uh, like this, if you want to learn it, uh, you can learn. You lots of you know resources available uh, on internet and anywhere. So you can read this. It's very important. But I just giving in a very simple way. Okay. So this is basically called gradient descent. So I am saying this because in this neural network, here is working for only one neuron. I'm just showing you for only one. We have to do the same thing for all the neurons. We have to do here, we have to do here, again, we have to do here, again, we have to do here. Okay. And then the, our, if we have to use that chain rule, you know, in definition of read chain rule, we have to go for chain rule and do the definition for like, suppose you want to update this weight, suppose you want to update this weight. So you have to go like this, you know, we have to go like this and we have to go for chain rule and we uh, slowly, slowly we are able to do this. Okay. Getting my point. So this is called uh, learning techniques, very simple fundamental. We have a different, different learning technique, I'll tell you. So this is the way machine is learning. There is no, you know, there is no magic inside the um, model. The math, only math is there, okay? So if you're good in math, that's why people from different background, even if you go in industry, you'll find people from mechanical, people from civil background, they are working as a data scientist. Even one of my friend who did BTEC in biotechnology. And he's working in a very like, good organization as a senior data scientist. Okay, so it doesn't matter uh, from which background you are. If you are good in math and then you learn Python, Python is very simple. And you, you can then you try to start to or go into this field. Okay, so the math is like but very important. Okay, so let's talk about uh, another uh, neural network that is called RNN, recurrent neural network. Let's see like this. So this is, this is basically your uh, conventional neural network and I told you about these lots of application right now in industry, people using in even in OCR or maybe object detection, classification, uh, lots of you know work is going on in industry in academic also if you want to do pursue your research and all. So even in India itself, if, if you go and check with the good university here in India, you find lots of people are working in these domains. Even in medical, people try to use uh, neural network, even in Production also in different different domain people try to use this uh, this technology. Okay, so it doesn't matter if you are from any background. There's no need to only from CS background. But from any background, you can use these models on your own domain because domain is also important. Like you know, civil engineering, you want to find your uh, material strength. Then nowadays people try to use these things. Okay, 
So maybe I'm not good in civil engineering, but I'm good in this. So I have to learn just to, I have to get some information about that domain and then we going to mix this technology and that technology. Okay, so even in technology, like oh, I work in telecom domain. So that's why in telecom also you are using this technology. Okay, so maybe in any domain in like telecom, civil, mechanical, any domain, people are using this technology. Okay, so let's go for second neural network. This is called recurrent neural network. Basically, neural neural network working on a time series data. Okay, let me show you one example. Here you can see, see this thing. Okay. This is basically, you know, time regimen. Just see, if you see this image, you can say there's a man who is maybe standing, you know, a pranama mutra. Okay. But if you see this image only, then you say there is man who is doing exercise. But if you see all the images step by step, then you are saying this man is doing Surya Namaskar. That is my point. So the, the information is needed in sequence. Okay. So whenever we uh, try to make a model in sequence, uh, this is called neural like uh, RNN recurrent neural network. So just think that uh, uh, natural language processing, like maybe an audio, I'm talking to you. So like if you just say yes and no, I can't say anything in an integer format. It has to be continuous. Then is there is meaning talking in English. So definitely this has to be a uh, like uh, rule into that what I'm talking. Okay. So the sequences matter. Whenever sequences matter, we have to go for RNN. So that's why in NLP, natural language processing, such type of data, we are using RNN. Even in time series data, okay. So definitely we have some time series model like ARIMA model, similar model. But even if you try LSTM on time series data, it will give good accuracy. Okay. Even people tried uh, also uh, uh, RNN and all. Okay. So this RNN have a different different model. If you see this. This, uh, we, we have this model like LSTM, GRU, by LSTM, deep RNN. These are the, the model in RNN. And, you know, because of some reason, we sometimes need uh, LSTM, sometimes GRU. You know, in RNN model, there are some problems. So to avoid these problems, we can use LSTM or GRU. Okay. So this type of, uh, like, task we can perform is there. Here you can see this is time series data. Even if you go for text classification, this is another example of RNN. Like here you can see, uh, this is the, here you can see the text. The half movie, uh, the first half of the movie was tried, but second half really picked the pace. The lead actor will deliver an amazing performance. So our board has to read this text and then this say whether it's a positive review or negative review. Okay. So this is a series data. This is a sequence data. Okay. So we can use uh, uh, like RNN. Even you can use CNN also, but even you can use RNN. And if you see, we are able to say this positive review or negative review. Let me show you one example. If you see this here, I build this model. So I'm not going to see show you the model. Just see the result. Here I'm writing this movie was really bad. I see this. What I'm getting negative. Uh, so it's giving the prediction is negative. If you say uh, mm, this this movie was really great, and I will see it again. This is my second sentence. I'm giving positive for that. Here you can see another great movie. Must watch to everyone this is my third stand and this model is saying the positive statement actually i learned this data even if you go so here is this lots of data there and i learned this data here you can see it's the data so we have already labeled data and i train my model on this label data and then i am able to predict whether this sentence is positive or negative so we can build this model and we can say whether it's a positive review or negative Getting my point. So this type of uh, problem also uh, there in your CNN. Okay. Uh, text generation. This is a very good. Even uh, you know you can uh, train your model, and that model is going to predict the next word. Like you know even uh, you see uh, you write anything in Google Gmail. So even Google Gmail is also predicting the next word. Okay, suggesting the next word. So such type of technology we can build using that RNN. So let me show you one example. Uh, here you can see I build the model. This is the data. So basically, data is important here. Very simple data. I use this data and I build this model. So if you go and see this, this is model. So let me show you the result directly. So here I say I'm giving this G and I like I'm trying to find next four word. I'm just giving the gel. So it's giving zero came blink after. That's my point. So this data. I'm able to predict, I'm just giving this, okay. So anyway, this is a very simple data set, but we can build for any data, okay. And we can try it. 
so i mean language modeling suppose you want to you know convert your language from maybe from hindi to sanskrit from sanskrit to bengali bengali to any other language like directly and you want to you don't know the you know the the rule uh, from transforming this data so we can build using this rnn and written neural network and then this, this neural network will provide uh, a rule for us how to translate one language to another language for language modeling uh, caption generation is also a good example in caption generation we are going to use rnn and cnn both we're going to mix that rnn and cnn and using mixing that that we are able to predict uh, the uh, we are able to uh, caption the images like suppose there is an image any image like here you can see one example here you can see the example there is a dog sitting here i am able to generate the caption okay so, but this is a really complex model because we have to use both so there are some good model attention model and all so if you want we can explore these things so these are the some examples okay uh, maybe in industry maybe in academics lots of work on going on so if you are really interested in neural network in deep learning you can explore a lot uh, lots of you know information available on anywhere in internet and books so you can you can enjoy if you could in math and little bit programming you may be very good in programming you just you just have to good in python and python is very simple and then you can start the learning of this because you all are in college so you have very good time and definitely you can start try to learn this okay so so actually uh, we don't have much time we have actually this time we are running out of time so this is about the this is the introduction to deep learning i try to touch everything okay but we have very less time so i'm not going deep anything i just try to only touch to everything so if anyone very interested you can explore this thing you are uh, like maybe you got interest in computer vision so you can go into computer vision maybe you are interested in uh, like language problem text problem uh, ocr problem then we go for nlp also okay so both um, are open both are you know lots of research going on lots of work going on uh, even if you are looking for a job in this field lots of jobs are there so so be prepare for that you are in, if you are in college you have good time you can try to learn these things you know so data and everything is available so you can learn okay so uh, this is uh, from my side i just i'm trying to give introduction and try to touch everything okay so if you have doubt any doubt please ask uh, if you have any doubt anywhere i will like try to like i love to uh, address your doubt okay so if you need doubt please let me know thank you sir thank you for the wonderful session you tried to cover almost everything in your session uh, but we are just short of the time so uh, i have few questions which audience asks uh, so first question is how is artificial neural network useful in making a machine intelligent okay like you know okay suppose uh, you have a machine and that machine is going to say this is cat so this is intelligence no if you are not intelligence how can we identify this is a, in this this object is cat or dog let's let's think about it is a human if you are if you are not intelligence we are not able to say with this dog or cat okay so it means our machine is intelligent then is going to say cat or dog that's called artificial intelligence because you artificially artificially you are building that machine as intelligent so that machine will identify whether it's a cat or dog just think like this So this is intelligence, no? So so actually, so intelligence, no? Otherwise, so just think of a, a, a child, this one year old child. This one year child able to identify with this cat or dog? No, because that child is going to learn. Then we say this is an intelligent child. Same happen here. Machine is going to identify with this dog or cat. This is an intelligent machine. Okay. So we train our machine using math only. Okay. okay? Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, the next question is that uh, is neural network is a good classifier? Yeah, why not? It's good classifier, but depends. Actually, suppose you have very small data, there is no need to go for neural network. Just go machine learning and use any classifier like maybe NAP based, maybe decision tree, maybe random forest. But sometimes we need neural network. Like if you uh, try to make a model for image classification, then this is good, no? If you use machine learning model, maybe you are not get good accuracy. that time this must, uh, this neural network are very very important okay 
So we can't say it's good or bad, but we need this sometimes. Okay, so that's why it's good classifier. Because machine learning has some limitation. We can't use every when machine learning models. Okay, even on images and text only. That's why we need these classifiers. Sir, one more question. Uh, contrast between neural network with fuzzy. Okay, actually, it's a very good question, actually. So, but the problem with time, okay, if you talk about the fuzzy network and all, uh, we, like we need lots of time. But if you uh, if you share my number with th uh, that student, definitely I will share some uh, resource so he can read because it's not a one minute, two minute answer. It's a very good question, actually. So if you share my number to those students because you have my number, so I will definitely share with some resource to him and he can read because uh, if this is not a two-day agenda. We are talking about only limited uh, things. So I'm not able to answer on that thing. We need some you know, uh, fundamental to answer that this question. So if you share my number to this student, I will definitely share some resource to him. Yes, sure, sir. Uh, sir, it's okay. Uh, we are having so many questions, but it's not possible to resolve all the questions. I will be sharing Thank you. with you personally so that you can resolve later on. Thank you, sir. Now I hand over the session to Aruna, ma'am. Aruna, ma'am, please. Aruna, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Now you can start. Okay. Really, it was, it was a very. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You are audible. Okay. Sir, it was a really very nice session. Thank good you, ma'am. Thank you. Good afternoon to all. On the behalf of IT department, IMP College of Engineering and the entire team, I take immense pleasure in extending my sincere thanks to guest of honor, Mr. Atma Kumar Rai, for sharing with us knowledgeable practices about deep learning. I hope all the spectators of this webinar all are highly inspired by your sparkling words. I extend my heartfelt Thanks to one and all for their unflinching support and coordination with this warm word and a kind message. We move to the end of the today's session. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank yeah, you. thank you, ma'am.